I'm interested by your global perspective right now because you are a man who helps oversee 150 countries worldwide. You are a man who talks to hospital heads on a daily basis. You're a man who can tell us like what it's like at the coalface right now. Are there strains in the system or are you seeing opportunity for where your business model really comes into good practice? Uh, well, thanks for having me again today. And yes, we are, you know, around the world, we're, we are seeing the recovery continue to move faster than anybody really thought. And I, look, I got to give credit to the, to the uh, physicians and the health, healthcare administrators, the hospital administrators around the world for really innovating uh, how they deliver care so that they can safely uh, treat, uh, conduct um, uh, elective cases. And at the, at the same time, they're treating COVID patients. And uh, they're really beating all expectations. And that's been part of the, uh, you know, our results. And the other piece of it comes back to our, our pipeline. Our pipeline's the strongest it's been. And, you know, we've had 180 product approvals over the last, uh, since January, 50 of which happened in the last quarter. So you combine a faster recovery with a lot of great innovation and, and you're gonna see, we get the results we posted today. And are hospitals telling you that that balancing act that they are doing can continue despite even some of the headline case numbers that we continue to get even on days like today? Look, they're, they're very committed. Uh, do, they're, they're really committed to keeping elective cases flowing. There are two things, and I'll, and I'll come at it from United States perspective. Uh, there are two things that uh, they are concerned with. One is if a certain, like a, a community hospital literally runs out of space, they have so many COVID patients. Some of these larger hospital chains can move patients around Within, their, within the chain, if you will, regionally, like move elective cases to another hospital. The smaller hospitals don't have that, that luxury. Um, be, so the other, the other issue would be a state mandate to, to stop elective cases. I think that's less likely, mm. um, but I could tell you, just even in the last week talking to hospital CEOs, they're, they're really committed uh, to being able to strike this balance. From your bird's eye perspective, I mean, you said that the recovery has been faster than you expected, perhaps in key businesses and key geographies. The U.S., moving outside of the U.S., have we seen such streamlining? And where's really impressed you from a geographical perspective? Well, China, I mean, China has been a, a very methodic, I wouldn't call it slow, but steady and methodic uh, recovery. And they're pretty much back to normal in, in many cases. So not just China, but other parts of Asia. Um, and in Europe and the United States, those three areas have been pretty good. You know, where we're, where we're still seeing struggles, India. India is really struggling uh, right now. Now, for us, that's a much smaller market. Uh, and then Latin America is also struggling, a little bit bigger market for us than, than India. Uh, but for luckily, from a financial perspective, uh, some of the our smaller markets are the ones that are, are trailing the most. But it still is a, a healthcare crisis that, uh, that we and others are trying to help out with. You talked about your pipeline and some of the FDA approvals that you have coming your way. Just looking through your release, it looks like some of the fastest areas for your business are those invasive, minimally invasive therapies. What do some of those FDA approvals and, and pipelines look like for that fast growing business? Well, you, you, you nailed it. The, 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 the real drivers here are less invasive, uh, which means less complications, right? as well as, so smaller, less invasive, less complications, as well as anything that can be done more remotely. So a great example of that is our, our micro uh, leadless pacemaker, which is delivered through a catheter versus a surgical procedure, and it uh, doesn't have any leads, it's very small. So that device, despite these, uh, the uh, pandemic, grew 75% uh, globally, 85% in the US. You know, and it's got both of those aspects. It's small, less invasive, and it's remotely, uh, it can be remotely uh, controlled from, from through the cloud. So we can do remote device checks, remote, you know, we can manage patients through the cloud. So that double dynamic is where we're seeing growth. Now, as we look out, uh, we've got some real disruptive things coming down the path here in the next two years. You know, leading that list would be our hypertension therapy that we call renal denervation that's finishing up a, 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 this, the last arm of, a, of its pivotal trial. Assuming that comes back successful, that could be one of the largest uh, public health um, impacts that we've seen in decades, because it actually lowers your blood pressure uh, quite quite measurably, and it, it sustains that without the uh, side effects of, of medicine. And that that would be a big one that, that would cause less strokes, less heart attacks. So we've got that. We've got a soft tissue robot coming down the path as well, uh, and various other uh, cardiac therapies and neuroscience therapies. 
It's so important to talk about other illnesses as well and, and what people are facing at the moment. And that was what much of the fear was when COVID erupted, was that people were going to be putting off necessary treatments and looking at themselves. P paint the picture for us, Jeff, when we're outside of this dark, dark cloud of COVID. Do you suddenly see a ramp up in demand? Do people suddenly come thick and fast talking about the illnesses, the grievances? And, and do you see the, the ability to meet that sort of demand? Well, look, the, you, you know, the whole idea, like, like for us, heart attacks and strokes, we treat both of those. Those are, you know, technically called elective cases, but I don't, I, I don't consider those to be very elective. And there really was an, uh, a fear of patients, even if they were suffering symptoms that were stroke-like or uh, chest pains, to not engage with the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. You know, industry working with uh, Medtronic and some of our competitors working with uh, the different societies like the American Heart Association and, and hospital networks. We've really done, I think, a good job at a public service campaign to drive up that confidence of patients. And we are see them re, uh, seeing them re-enter the healthcare system. And we have kind of worked through, by and large, that backlog of patients. There's still some that are kind of waiting on the sidelines, um, but a lot of that is worked through. So when we fully get out of this pandemic, I don't see this huge bolus of patients coming. There'll be a slight uptick, but we've been really working down that backlog of patients on getting them to enter the healthcare system over the last couple of months. That's what I meant about, you know, the different parts of the healthcare system coming together uh, and, and collaborating to, uh, to make this happen.